I got a chance to try out Gundam Breaker 4 for the first time during the JP Close Network test and let me tell you, I have not been this excited for a game in a long time. In case you weren't aware, there's a closed network test for JP players that takes place over a series of 2 hour periods during the weekend of March 15th, and you had to register a week or two before to get in. But you didn't have to be in Japan to register, so as long as you had a JP account to download the beta client, you were good to go. I think it goes to show how excited people are for this game because they got so many applications that instead of only selecting certain people, they decided to just grant access to everyone who applied. I'm here to give y'all my first impression of Breaker 4 after actually playing the game and hopefully show you why I'm so excited for the launch. Now I will say there are some limitations to what I took away from the beta because it was all in Japanese, so there's a bunch of stuff I didn't understand. Lynx and I even resorted to opening Google Translate on our phones and pointing the camera at our monitors to help us read certain menus. Thankfully, because I used to import all my Gundam games when I was a kid, I have some experience navigating Japanese games and was able to find my way around for the most part. I don't know what they want me to do for this one. Double, maybe? Yeah, okay. Look at that! Intuition chat! Can't even read the, the menus. Still got it. This is what? Gallery, I'm guessing? This looks like gallery. It is gallery. Look at that. I can read Japanese. I can see my friend code, but... I oh, I can't know. find my friend code. So you go... You hit options, and you go to the third option... I think that says profile card. Bro, I'm so good at Japanese. But at the end of the day, another language is another language, and no matter how much I used to play games in Japanese, and no matter how much we use Google Translate, there were still a couple mix-ups here and there. Uh, is it the middle? I guess it's the middle option to accept, I'm assuming. Maybe? I don't know if that worked. I will look at my friend list. No. Bro, what is the... Oh wait, did that work? Unless I accidentally deleted it. I don't know which one. I'm not seeing it. Okay, gamer. Let us try it. Oh, what's this message? The friend request was rejected. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. No problem, bro. I'll kill myself. <laughs> Let's get into the real stuff. The beta had three missions, the second of which was the one from the dev stream that ended in the unicorn boss fight. As you would expect, these missions got progressively harder, with the last one having you fight three bosses at once on the last wave. You could even change the difficulty to hardcore to see how it would feel to fight while you're underleveled. The missions were enjoyable, and I liked how the boss fights played, the only thing that I wasn't the biggest fan of is how you move from wave to wave. It reminded me of certain missions in Gun and Breaker Mobile because you despawn after one wave and respawn into the next one, and I feel like I would have preferred one large area that you progress through. But this format does let them include multiple maps in each mission, which I guess isn't the worst thing. I would have preferred if they had included something like 5 missions total, but honestly it didn't feel bad rerunning the same ones at all because each one had a bunch of suits with cool parts to collect, like the Full Armor Unicorn, the New Gundam, and the Endless Waltz Wing Zero. And the gameplay itself feels really smooth. One question I got a lot on stream and on Twitter was whether or not the gameplay feels like Breaker 3 because people were afraid it was going to be another new Gundam Breaker. It's been years since I played GB3 and I never played new Gundam Breaker so I might not be the best person to ask, but from what I remember this game does play similar to Breaker 3 and a lot of people seem to agree. I've also seen some people compare it to Dynasty Warriors Gundam which I don't really think is a fair comparison. Dynasty Warriors Gundam is a beat em up style game, and there are some situations in this game where you end up catching multiple enemies in a combo, but the main focus of the gameplay is usually building up your combo meter as much as possible through single target damage. This is because as your combo counter goes up, you get bonuses to things like part drops. But bonus or not, it felt like the drops from missions were pretty generous. Then again, it's possible I just got lucky because there were a ton of parts I dropped that Lynx apparently didn't. Oh wait, I have a full armor gun and backpack? I didn't even see that! I'm so jealous, I do not have. Please give me a, a still rifle, please! <laughs> Arms, oh no! Oh, the head though, that's so fucking fed. I got something for the new Gundam. Yeah, I, didn't, I don't- I think I got the arms or maybe the head. I think I got a saber and the legs, maybe? Oh my god, I'm so jealous of both of those things. <laughs> He's gonna be so mad, chat. 
He's gonna be so pissed. Who will be pissed? Me? Maybe. Pull up stream. Oh, the backpack, I'm so fucking jealous. <laughs> I told you, chat. I got the backpack for the Dolvin Wolf. I got the backpack for the F91. I got the backpack for the new. You. <sighs> Holy shit. I have nothing nice to say to you, Seiji. The controls are fairly straightforward. On a controller, you have your triggers for your left and right ranged weapons, and separate buttons for your left and right melee weapons that allow you to switch up your combo depending on your inputs. They've also added a new move where if you press X in the air, you'll immediately land, similar to a boost dive in Gundam Versus, and yes, I know that's a dated reference. But this is super useful for after you've finished a big aerial combo and want to get back down to start attacking other enemies. Just from the short time I played, I can already tell there's so much variety in how you can play, especially when it comes to your combos. Unfortunately, I didn't spend a lot of time labbing because I was trying to play in missions as much as possible with the short time I had, but I can tell that once you learn how to properly chain things together, you can do some pretty flashy moves. Like for example, if you launch an enemy upward and do your air combo and knock them away, you would probably expect the combo to end there, but you can actually input again to chase them and keep the combo going. Even through using things like shield bits, I was able to stagger my opponents in midair and extend my combos even further. There definitely were times where I couldn't figure out how I did what I did though. For example, sometimes my combos would end in kicking the enemy away, and other times I would finish with a downward helm breaker that caused me to land. Again, these are things that I'm looking forward to experimenting with once I have more time to play around with the controls. One thing I will add is that sometimes the tracking for melee felt a little janky, especially when it came to EX skills. I had some instances where my gunpla would dash forward to land a melee EX skill, and others where it would stay in place and just completely whiff. And speaking of your EX skills, in this game they work almost like special moves in a fighting game. You have an EX meter in the bottom left of your screen that you fill up by landing combos, and each EX skill has a cost associated with it that you can see on its icon. So if you build enough meter, you can essentially spam your EX skills back to back. On the flip side though, your option skills all share a single cooldown, so once you use one, you can't use any of the others until the cooldown is over. This isn't horrible, but it does kind of feel bad because some of the option skills are really cool and it would be nice to be able to use them more freely. Me personally, I'm still getting used to the controls. I play so much Gundam Extreme Versus that my muscle memory is kind of hardwired to play like that, so playing with a different button setup is pretty jarring. Like in X Versus you double tap X to boost, so I would instinctively try and do that in this game and just end up jumping in the air and then landing really fast. This also meant that I immediately forgot that the block and quick dash buttons existed, which became an issue when the unicorn boss got mad at me for stealing his drip. We're about to fuck you up, guy. Yeah, this guy's getting cooked, for sure. I'm gonna launch a fuel tank at him immediately. That's <laughs> crazy, that's his own thing. Yeah. Uh oh. I don't know like how best to dodge that when it's locked on to me, to be honest. Oh shit. Oh! This guy hates you, man. Yeah, man. He saw that I had his backpack and he was like, fuck this guy in particular. Like, I don't know how to how to dodge attacks like that. There must be a button that you can use to, like, cut tracking. Bro, he hates me! It's over. Nice. Let's talk about customization, because you can really do some crazy stuff here. Like I've mentioned in previous videos, a big thing they've been driving home with this game is that you can have two different arm parts as well as different ranged and melee weapons for each arm. This gives you a lot more options because you can now have different combos or different skills depending on the parts you choose. A lot of the time I found myself having trouble deciding which skills to pick because it wasn't possible to select every single one my parts offered. There are some parts that even have multiple skills now, such as the FA Thunderbolt and FA Unicorn's backpacks, and these can be a combination of both EX and option skills. I mentioned in my last video that this game seems like it's really embodying the Gunpla is Freedom quote from Build Fighters, and I don't think I could have been more right. In fact, I'd argue in some cases you almost have too much freedom. Look at how the high gog arm holds this fucking beam rifle. This is so dumb. That's so nasty. <laughs> oh, that is gross. That's disgusting. Why is it posed like that? <laughs> 
Why does he look like that? He's not even holding the machine gun. It's just stuck in his hand. Don't believe me? What if I told you that you can reposition your option parts almost anywhere on your Gumpla and do unspeakable things like Lynx did with his anti-ship sword? Please look at where I'm putting my sword at, Seiji. I'm going to text it to you. Yeah, I know it's going to be some stupid shit. I text it to you. Do I want to see this? <laughs> of course. How is that even possible? I didn't even see that option. Hold on. <laughs> Chad, I'm going to try and replicate what Lynx just sent me. So you can see for yourselves, because this is ridiculous. Okay, like, I still don't understand how you... How did you get it to go at that angle? <laughs> oh, it just, uh... When I equipped it, let me see. Because I'm cycling through like all the parts right now, or all the options, and it's not doing. Oh, never mind, I found it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, chat. The Hornball Gundam. Me seeing all the cool new features in Gundam Breaker 4. Still not convinced? What if I told you that you could individually adjust the size of your parts and create even more unspeakable things like one of my mods Gabriel did just because he could? <laughs> I personally spent over 30 minutes in my second session creating my first custom build and I can tell I barely even scratched the surface of what this game can do. Keep in mind I only had a few parts I had dropped from the three missions in the beta so it's not like I had the entire kit list to pick from. And when it came to painting I just went with super basic colors, I didn't even get into things like weathering or changing the surface finish or adding decals or changing the panel line color because you can do that now apparently. I did find it a little tough to figure out the painting system, but I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt here and say that it's partially due to the fact that I can't read the menus, and partially because I was trying to go somewhat quickly so I didn't waste time. But even then, like I said, I spent over 30 minutes on that build. I can easily see myself spending hours in there once the full game comes out and I have time to sink my teeth into it. Overall, I had an amazing time playing the beta and it only left me wanting more. I need them to announce the release date for this game immediately. I think it says a lot that despite a few small gripes with the game, me and my friends still had so much fun. This might be the best Gundam game I've ever played. It's been five minutes. Hey man, that's all it takes for peak. Bro, I don't want to hear anybody talking shit about this is just another new Gundam Breaker. This already looks so much better. <laughs> and I'm just talking about the launch sequence, by the way. I'm hoping that over the next few months we get an English beta that includes PC because I think that being able to understand and properly navigate the menus would have made this an even more enjoyable experience. And really quickly, I want to give a big shout out to everyone that stopped by on Twitch on the first night of the beta. We gained almost 30 followers on stream and blew past my 400 follower goal, so thank you guys so much. Leave a comment down below if you had a chance to try out the beta yourself and let me know what you thought. I'll continue to cover news and updates on Breaker 4 leading up to the release, so if this game has caught your attention, be sure to watch this space. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a positive rating to help me in my boss battle against the algorithm, subscribe to the channel for more Gundam content, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.